Hi, this is the third part of our House T 3DS Max 2020 visualization series and we've brought the model in, we've assigned a simple material to the, most of the model and to the, to the glazing and we're now going to set this up for our first attempt at a render. Uh, first thing we need to do is add a light source to this and initially we're going to try and light this with just daylight only so we want to add something to the scene so we use the plus sign here it's a light that we want to add and we're going to use the Sun positioner okay don't worry about the settings we'll change those once we've got the Sun positioner in place okay so I'm going to place this in the top view it seems the most sensible place so we get uh, the, uh, the Sun facing the right direction okay so you with your with your left mouse button just click and drag and we can create a reasonably large compass so at least we can read it and then let go okay then you can decide which way north is or you can do this later you can tell it tell it by using an angle you know the exact location angle for the building but I'm just gonna go for north so click again and then the third click is to do to determine how far away from the model you want the what's called the sunlight head uh, it doesn't have to be miles away as if it's the Sun it can be just above the model something like this okay so that's put it in and it's kind of default settings so while that's still selected okay when an object selected in 3d studio it's usually bright white if I just click off the object you'll see that it dims down but when it's selected it's bright white then you can modify it okay if the object isn't selected the modify panel goes blank okay but selected modify and firstly we'll choose a location so let's see how close we can get to uh, Miyazaki which is where this building is located so click San Francisco change to Asia and if I click about here Osaka is the closest building in Japan that I can get to sorry closest city okay so we'll let those settings go in but what we'll do is we'll put in the more accurate position okay so we can overrule the latitude and the longitude here okay and in decimal the uh, latitude is 31.915 and the longitude is 131.416 okay so it does change the angle slightly now the time of the day is obviously quite important we're wanting the Sun to be able to get into this courtyard here um, so what I'm going to do is just drop this back by one hour I'll just say that it's going to be 11 a.m. okay on the 21st of June so that's when the the Sun is at its at its highest middle of the summer the summer uh, summer solstice okay so we've set up our lighting we now need a camera so back to the plus symbol we want a camera this time and there's three types of cameras free is a very limited in its position okay so I tend to avoid that one target is a good one to start with you can control the camera's position and the target location independently excellent for animation if you know your way around a DSLR camera fully then a physical camera is probably the one to go to but initially I would start with a target camera Okay, I'm just rolling the mouse in the top view to get in a bit closer and I want to stand generally at the top of the stairs the way this house works is that the, the living the main living space is at the first floor so I want to stand at the top of the staircase here looking towards the windows and towards our courtyard so you you click where you want to stand so you click and hold so it's click hold drag to your target okay my targets gonna be about here and let go 
Okay, you can see the camera has arrived, but it's on the ground. So let's see what that camera can see at the moment. Okay, I don't want to add another camera. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to select object. Okay, click once in the perspective viewport. Click the word perspective. Change to cameras, camera 01. Okay, we're not seeing a heck of a lot there. We need to lift this camera up off the floor. So I want to select and move, but I only want to move the camera. So this is where the filter comes into play again. Change it to cameras, select and move. Okay, now we haven't done any moving of objects yet. So let's, let's do this in the front viewport. Let's maximize that. And let's look a bit closer in at the camera. Now, the camera was the last thing that was selected, so it's still active. And with the move tool, you can see this device arrives. This is called the transform gizmo. If I click on just the green arrow, it only moves vertically. I'm doing control Z to undo. If I hold the red arrow, it only moves horizontally. Control Z to undo. If I click in the corner of this yellow square, I get free movement in any direction in the X and Y plane. Control Z. Okay, now I'm doing that because I want to keep the camera and its target in line with each other. And this stops you getting convergence and divergence in the perspective view. Okay, so if I, if I click the line that joins the two of them, both are selected. Use the green arrowhead. I'm going to take the camera to the floor level first. Okay, and then look carefully at this slot because I want to put the camera to what I would consider roughly eye level. So that's about 1500 millimeters. So 1.5 meters. So I'm looking at that Y value. When it gets to about 1.5, let go. Okay, let's have a look now. And we can see the camera is looking at the large window in the living space. I can see the cupboard doors here, but it's quite a narrow view. I can't see much of the room because the field of view, that's what this conical shape is, this triangle, that's the field of view, is too narrow. Okay, click on just the camera, modify, and we can look for the stock lenses. So this is going to adjust the field of view. So watch this number change as you change the lens on the camera. 24 millimeters, 20 millimeters. The perspective gets more dramatic the shorter the lens gets. Okay, what I'm going to do though is this, this wall's a bit boring, a bit dull. I'm going to move the view round. So clicking just the target, pull that round till I can see a bit of the staircase coming up from down below. Okay, quite like that view. Right, now what we'll do next is set up the the rendering. So we've got a camera, we've got our lights, we've got materials on the stuff we need. We need to check our rendering setup. Okay, at the moment the renderer is set to a three Sorry, a four to three ratio. Okay, this shape of the viewport isn't a four to three ratio. Okay, to me that looks more like a two to one. Okay, so something's amiss here. What I what I see in the viewport isn't what's going to happen when I render. So what you're better to do is click the word camera. Okay, and show safe frames. Okay, so can you understand now? That's the four to three ratio. Seeing way too much ceiling and way too much floor there. So what I'm gonna do is change the settings here to 1200 pixels by 600. When I press enter there, it gives me an image aspect of two. So that's my two to one ratio showing in the render setup and in the viewport. Okay, a couple of more things we need to change. 
I would advise you to force two sided. Doesn't add a lot to the rendering time, but it just makes sure everything that's facing away from you it gets rendered in the camera view. The render output, if we want to save it and use it, we need to give it a name and a location for saving. Okay, so you click on the word files. I'm going to save to the desktop and call this living space. Okay, I'm going to choose a TIFF image type. Okay, click back in the word living space and the setup for the TIFF image appears. Store the alpha channel and that means if there's any transparency in any of the objects here that gets built into the file and it can be used in Photoshop later. I'll show you how. So, OK. Save. So it's when we render now it will keep the file for us to, to see. OK, we could either hit the render button here or the render button with the lightning flash. OK, watch that you don't go to render in the cloud. Unless you've got credits, that won't work. OK, you're using Autodesk's computer power to do your rendering there. So render production here or render here. It will only render the active viewport. So you always have to check that, you know, the view is the one with the yellow border. OK, let's hit render and see what it looks like. OK, we'll give it a few seconds. Fans on the machine start whirring into life. Now we can see something's happening, but it's way too bright. So this is your progress bar, and you can stop a render if it's not, you know, this is not going to work out. So we stop it right now. Okay, so that's the render quit. Okay, what's the problem here is that we've got an exposure control that's set much too low. It's letting far too much light into the camera. Okay, so if we go to rendering exposure control, and we can all we need to do is change this single value that's here and we just make it a fair bit higher. So I'm going to go for something like 14. Press enter. Let's try rendering again. Save over the file that was just created, yes. And let's see what we get this time. Right, so that's, some, that's working now. I can see the darkest part of the room. Okay, I can see through the outside window here. Okay, we're looking through into the courtyard here. So the bluish tinge is coming from the sky. The color of the sky is in the white walls in out there. So not much detail to see there. It didn't render for very long. It was just a matter of seconds. But we know we're in the right kind of ballpark. This button here shows you the alpha channel. Remember the transparency information? So we can see that that shape there is where there's a transparent item looking through to the outside. Okay, now that takes us to a, to a point where we, we need to add more materials, but the materials need to have what we call mapping coordinates. So we'll start with the floor here and you'll see a dramatic change in the the, the color and the quality of the, the image. So we stop this one at this point.